So suppose you have this function and you're being asked the domain and range. Well, domain is already given. So it's strange to ask that question. Domain is from negative infinity to one. And when you have to produce the, the range of a function, the only way I know how to do it is by drawing the graph of it and looking at its height, because the height gives you the y values, right? And range is the y values. So we're going to draw this graph. And thankfully, the graph is already given in terms of the vertex form. Vertex form is this, right? So you have h being 1, k being 2. So 1, comma 2 is the vertex. And because I, we all, all know that this is a parabola, we draw the parabola. Is that the correct graph? No, why not? Domain says. Because our domain is restricted. It's not, I mean, although we can plug in any number in here, sometimes you have a function with a restricted domain. It's like putting a, a note in front of the machine and say, do not use this machine for x bigger than one. Okay? We, we just, we will forbade anybody doing that, okay? Uh, so that's what's happening. So. After one, you can't produce a graph because the function would not produce anything. The domain is restricted from negative to right. one. Now looking at this, what's the range? Two to infinity. Right? Two to infinity. Here's the lowest point, which is two, and it goes up without any bound, so it goes to infinity. So we know that the, the range would be 2 until infinity. Now, when you have that answer, actually, you can immediately answer part D, because uh, what, what's the question D? It's about finding domain and range of F inverse. What do we know about the relationship between domain and range of the original function and domain and range of the inverse function? You just flip them, right? So what's the domain of F inverse? What is it? <clears throat> One to negative. No. no, no, no. Oh, wait. Yeah. Huh? Which way do you flip? Do you flip like this? No, you flip like this. Domain and range gets flipped, okay? So domain becomes range, range becomes domain, right? So what's the domain? No, no, no. It's two to infinity. The range of the original function becomes the domain. Domain of the original function becomes the range. Yeah, it's confusing because there are so many different ways to flip. You can flip like a fraction. You can flip like between these two. Oh, well, that can't be done because you, uh, for intervals, you always have to put the lower number left. So this kind of flipping is prohibited. Uh, so, so here, when I say you can flip them, I mean the domain and range gets flipped. So domain becomes the range, range becomes the domain. So that's your range of f inverse of x. Now, when you get to sketch the graph of f inverse, remember over which line do we flip? The reflection over y equal to x gives you the graph of the f inverse, right? So we're going to reflect this graph over here to draw this new graph. And, and really, if uh, you have an uh, artistic nephew or niece, uh, you give them this half and say, oh, make, make this symmetric along this line. Can you do it? Yeah. They'll be able to do this without any problem. So uh, try this. You don't have any huh? Ah, uh, well, too bad. Okay, so first, this 1, 2 will go to 2, 1 because you're flipping the coordinates. 1, 2 becomes 2, 1. It seems to have a y intercept, right? So let's see what y intercept we get. It 
might help us. If you plug in zero, what do you get? Negative one squared, that's one times two. That's two, two plus two is four. So why you to set this four? Four d wise, this is zero comma four, right? Now where does this go if you flip? Zero comma four will go where? Four comma zero. So where's four comma zero? Three, four, right here. And then just like that, it should be connected, so it will be like that. I think this is too wide. So that's the graph. So we're done with A, we're done with B, we're done with D. The only thing we have to do is F inverse. Now let's try this. Uh, we first introduce Y for F of X. Now what do you do? What's the next step? X and Y switches. Then what do you do? You solve for y, right? So you subtract two both sides. Divide by two both sides so that this two goes away. And you end up with y minus one squared equals to x minus two over two. And then to get rid of the square, you have to take the square root both sides, right? Mm -hmm. However, there's a problem. Whenever you take the square root, there's a choice that you have to make. Should you use plus or should you use minus? Okay. So, so let's let's hold off this decision for a moment and solve for y. So it's either y equals to negative one, no positive one by adding one both sides. It's one plus radical x minus two over two or 1 minus square root of x minus 2 over 2. And the question is, which one's correct? Because it can only be one solution. And uh, to answer that question, you can do, you can either use the graph or you can use the range. Look at the range. The range says that y value can be at most 1 or less. Now, if you do 1 plus something, is that less than 1 or greater than 1? Greater. It's more than one, right? How about one minus something? Is that less than one or greater than one? It's less than, right. So to be in accordance with our condition that the range should be from negative infinity to one, which one should we choose? This one. Okay? This, this is a no-go because this is not satisfied. Okay? Yeah, and, and another thing is, if you look at the graph, again, this says uh, the graph shows that the y value is one or less, right? So it's in accordance with this range. So that's the answer to f inverse of x. So uh, the answer to this is that f inverse of x is one minus square root of x minus two over two. That's how you do it.